Now, Quinn was a character that I first truly experienced when I was doing the Why I Hate Mundo video. She was never really played at all before then. Even after her release, I never really felt like she saw a lot of play, maybe because her spells put her into melee range most of the time, which meant her top lane was kind of lackluster because other melee top laners would mash the shit out of her skull whenever she got too close, and she was kind of a lackluster AD carry because her skills obviously could put her within melee range, which meant any Leonas or Blitzcranks that happened to spot you trading could just grab a handful of those ass feathers and shove their shield or fist straight up your jacksy, not to mention the piss poor range that she had compared to other AD carries. But for me to truly appreciate the design and mechanics behind Quinn, it would take a lot of work, but I knew that with the right environment, I could get into the mindset of the bird, and in that, my ability as a Quinn player would truly improve. I documented my journey into the mind of the bird, and I am here today to present this transformation to you, the people of YouTube. If there are any people looking to use my Quinn footage for any potential guides that they may want to draft, don't worry because Quinn the movie is coming soon for your infinite enjoyment. The full video itself will have you pulling pentakills out of your asshole on Twisted Tree Line without even looking at the screen. So I've got a pretty good friend, yeah, yes, that's, that's right, I have a friend, who I met through YouTube and he might actually be one of the few people that I've met in my life who can actually seriously say that they're into Quinn. His name is Kieran and he runs a YouTube channel from Uber Danger's basement. It's Kiori, so what did you think of Quinn? Okay, Ross, well, I don't really want to toot my own horn here, but, uh... You go against my Quinn in any lane, and I guarantee the FDA will be on my case for excessive sodium content. Firstly, this champion demands your respect, okay? She ain't like these sluts out here exposing mad titty for the 14-year-olds. Looking at you, Ari Mains. Nah, Quinn comes dressed for the occasion in full armor, okay? This is what a real woman looks like. Now, we all know 99% of League players are deathly afraid of women in real life. Well, Quinn's gonna take that to the next level. You go against a good Quinn, and you're gonna be hearing- Gouge him, Valor! In your sleep. You're gonna be seeing that splash art and get triggered harder than a Tumblr user who just saw fan art of Rose Quartz drawn a little bit skinnier than she appears in the original cartoon. Why, you might ask? Well, once Valor marks you with the Harrier passive, prepare your body for the shock of a lifetime because you're gonna get autoed, which is gonna proc the passive. You're gonna get blinded, which is gonna cause another mark. So you're gonna get autoed again, which is gonna proc the passive. Then you're gonna get vaulted off, which is gonna mark you again. And then you're gonna get autoed again, which is gonna proc the passive. <laughs> oh, and of course we can't forget about our Lord and Savior Thunderlord, can we? That combo, by the way, that doesn't cost any mana and it's gonna be back off in 10 seconds. Oh, and uh, we haven't even started talking about her map presence. Oh boy, don't even get me stuck. Okay, yeah, I guess I can see why people hate this champion. Now, it took a lot of work getting Keyboy to say this about Quinn. That's how powerful his love for this character is, and you're never gonna see that again, ladies and gentlemen. So what about a resident in-house shit talker mauler? What did that silky, silver-tongued motherfucker have to say? Quinn? Why Quinn? I don't know anything about that retarded attempt at giving feminism a response to Birdman. Though I would say that Riot have a fascinating way of balancing certain champions by making their already incessantly annoying ultimate something that is a switch on and offable move. Why thank you, that makes it all better. All I can comment here really is that I look forward to what Ross has to say about this consistently blinding cretin. I mean, you're in a 1v1, there's always loads of shit everywhere, minions, champions, and plenty of maneuverability, yet she manages to always land that retardedly over Overpowered, seemingly never-ending nonsense that will consistently ruin every single goddamn one v fucking one I have with her. Fuck her. Get her out of the game. Piece of shit can die in a fire made of acid and rusty fucking nails. Jesus, that voice. You know this boy does uh, voice impressions, by the way, so you can kind of like go, you can go harass him and ask him to voice your own shit. In one of his videos. So now that I've sufficiently embarrassed myself with the cosplays, let's get into the meat of Quinn. Or should I say? Uh, 
the poultry of Quinn. Pause for laughter. So Harrier is Quinn's passive and it's a spell that's cooldown strangely scales with critical strike chance. Every so often, Quinn's bird Valor will swoop onto a nearby unit and mark that unit, revealing them for 4 seconds. If Quinn manages to land an auto attack on the marked target, it deals up to 100 extra damage that has an extra up to 50% AD scaling. It's basically like every 5-10 to 10 seconds, whichever target is unlucky enough to be marked by that evil fucking looking asshole Valor. Well, they're about to be rammed by the 16 inch pink dildo of justice. I don't really want to say this too loud because I'm not sure what happened, but I, I might just, I might just, I might just say this. It crits. <laughs> Blinding Assault is Quinn's Q, and to you, the person who was assholeish enough to play Quinn in the first place, it's great. It doesn't seem like any big deal. You're just kind of sitting there in lane, throwing fucking birds at any random motherfucker that happens to walk past you. You don't even give a fuck about the bird's safety. You're, you're throwing Valor around like a baseball. But if you've never played against or played Quinn before, here's a quick artist rendition of what it looks like if you happen to be leaning against the Quinn or manage to become the target of all the cues that she's throwing out. You go full Lee Sin cosplay mode on this one, Quinn throws Valor out in a lane, which collides with units dealing up to 120 physical damage that scales 120% with AD and 50% with AP. Apply Nearsight to enemy champions which basically equips them with the ability to see about 4 inches in front of them and nothing else. This also disarms all other non-champion targets for 2 seconds. It applies damage in a radius around the target hit though, so despite the pretty great scaling on it, despite the good range, despite the low cooldown, you don't really have have to even fucking consider the fact that you might miss a skill shot, just throw that shit out whenever it's off cooldown and try to make farming as difficult as physically possible for the enemy laner. Your junglers coming in to gank, slap a blinding assault onto the enemy as your laner comes through a warded area and watch the moment of realisation when he figures out he's totally fucked. Heightened senses is what happens when you turn the Metal Gear Solid alert sound into a move in a video game. It reveals a huge radius around Quinn, and every time Quinn attacks a target marked with her passive, she is granted bonus attack and movement speed up to 40%. So the passive is pretty decent actually, but honestly, I know Vision is pretty OP in this game, but it's it's in the same vein as Ash's Hawkshot, it just kind of exists, and only maybe two or three times a game will you actually be like, hey, I can use this spell. Every other time you're just gonna hit it in a panic when you're teamfighting or trading with the enemy top laner as if somehow revealing the bushes nearby is gonna actually make you do any more fucking damage. Vault is Quinn's E and it's a spell that makes me feel like she's in a bit of a weird position as a character. Quinn dashes to the target enemy, knocking them back a short distance, dealing physical damage and slowing them for 50%. Quinn bounces off the target and leaps backwards landing away from them. The cooldown is it's pretty low and I can honestly admire that there is some utility in the spell, but fuck me if there aren't plenty of times that you turn around to vault off an enemy low health and just fucking die immediately, or if you're bot lane and you fucking vault straight into a thresh or blitzcrab gank and suddenly your asshole is conducting 1.21 gigawatts of fucking energy. It deals a pretty meh amount of damage for the danger you're potentially putting yourself in, and whilst the potential to outplay enemies with it is cool where you can use it to juke a spell or jump over a wall, and sure it applies your passive whenever you vault onto an enemy, making 1v1ing pretty decent, I just think it's a spell that you can't really use if you're behind in lane, which means basically two of your spells are unusable if you're in deep shit in lane, because one just gives you vision and one gets your ass turned into a rotisserie chicken. Now, finally, we have Behind Enemy Lines, which is Quinn's ultimate. Originally, this spell used to be badass. You would basically morph into Valor, and it looked cool, but with a rework instead, Valor flies down and picks Quinn up, which increases your movement speed up to 130%. This means that despite the fact that Quinn is not really a tanky top lane or a character with really any CC, she can roam. She can roam like there's no fucking tomorrow with this spell. And with its 3 second cooldown, she can push talk, eagle the fuck down to mid and then eagle back up to her own lane before the lane is even reset back to the river. Deactivating this spell or using her Q and E automatically detaches Valor and casts Sky Strike which causes 100% AD damage and a decent radius around Quinn, which is it's, it's alright. Quinn does get dragged out of her ulti if she takes damage from towers, epic monsters or from enemy champions though. So this isn't a spell that you can really be using in teamfights. Honestly, there's really not that much to say about this particular spell. It's great for soaring across the rift and getting up in people's fucking faces, but I'm just saying don't be even remotely surprised if when you actually get up in their faces, they respond by hitting you with a little ghetto gospel.
Hey you guys, so thank you so much for watching yet another episode of Why I Hate. Uh, I hope you didn't cringe too hard at my bird cosplay, and if you guys want it, I'm more than happy to create a full version of the experience for you all to cringe along with. So today, as I have been doing over the last few Why I Hate episodes, I want to recommend another anime that I really enjoy. Big shout out to everyone who has taken the time to sign up to this service Crunchyroll using the crunchyroll.com forward slash Ross Boomsocks link. This particular episode isn't even sponsored by them and I'm getting quite literally nothing from this, but I actually really like recommending anime at this point, so fuck it, let's go. Alright, so I'm hitting you with an anime that I really fucking passionately loved for a long time, but when I got to near the end, I was really, really upset because, spoiler alert, the show was put on hiatus because the creator of the show fell ill or some shit, I believe, and it has been on hiatus for a long time. So that anime is called Hunter x Hunter, and it's about a kid called Gon who sets out on a journey to find his father who left him when he was just a young boy. The only way that Gon believes he can actually do this though is by becoming a hunter, a highly sought after profession in the anime's universe that only the strong, durable and intelligent people can achieve. The beginning of the show follows Gon as he makes some friends and sets out to complete the hunter exam. From there it goes from trying to take down a group of insanely strong bad guys called the Phantom Troop to trying to complete a virtual reality MMO game in order to find out more information about Gon's dad and to taking on an enemy of insects that consume humans and hatch babies that replicate the person being eaten. It's a great show with some great fights and it is very much reminds me of the early Dragon Ball. Uh, in a lot of ways, Gone is like very similar to young Goku and hell, even One Punch Man recognises Gon's ability in the opening to One Punch Man. Yeah, that move that Saitama does with his hands. Yeah, Gon, Gon made that shit. So uh, yeah, anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the stuff I've recommended so far and uh, have a great day.